call the meeting to order and uh, welcome everyone to our building committee meeting. Uh, thank you all for coming out. Uh, we have a robust agenda as usual. Uh, before getting into the uh, new business, I just wanted to take a moment to thank everyone who participated in our uh, informational sessions last week. Uh, we had two wonderful sessions. Uh, the first one was held virtually on the 28th, and then we had one on Saturday, which was in person at uh, Wintonberry McMahon. Uh, great turnout at the virtual session. I think we had 67 attendees via Zoom. On Saturday, we had 10 uh, folks inside of uh, McMahon Wintonberry. Elizabeth, thank you and your staff for accommodating us on Saturday. And uh, thank folks for coming out on Saturday, which is, uh, it was a great meeting. It was a small, uh, but effective group. We had, I think four council members, including the mayor who participated in our informational sessions. Uh, 12 out of 16 of our committee members participated uh, in person or virtually. Uh, there was tremendous support from the community uh, during the uh, virtual session and the same thing on Saturday in the live session. Uh, a huge uh, recognition from those who attended, uh, recognizing the committee and the work that we're all putting in. So that was uh, nice to hear. And I thought it was a really uh, positive and, and robust Q&A, uh, particularly on uh, Thursday. And for those who have not seen it or did not have a chance to participate, uh, please see the video. Uh, Elizabeth shared the video of uh, last th Wednesday with the entire committee, uh, as well as uh, the council, I believe, and the library board. Uh, again, thanks to all who participated and for our panelists, uh, Elizabeth, Mark, Witt, uh, the folks from Downs Construction. Uh, I think everyone did a tremendous job, including the mayor. And uh, I, I know that many of us who were there in both sessions or either one left those sessions feeling really good about the project and uh, the, uh, the buy-in and engagement from the community. I thought you know, having 67 people uh, in the program last Wednesday was uh, really, really said a lot about uh, people's interest and support of uh, what we're doing. So again, a, a big shout out and uh, thank you all so much for that. Uh, now that we have a quorum, Mark, welcome. Sorry about the mix up there. I, I wasn't invited to the party, so. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go into uh, old business and I'd like to uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes from April 14th and April 21st. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Ike, is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Bob. Uh, any discussion on the minutes, the April 14th minutes? Right, any discussion on the 21st, uh, the minutes from April 21st? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. aye. Any opposition or abstentions? Great. Motion carries. Going into our committee updates. Uh, I do have one update and I'll, I'll wait, but uh, we're gonna go into the external outreach and survey. Maxine isn't here and uh, Elizabeth will present Maxine's subcommittee report. Thank you, Greg. The survey results were shared with the town council two times and they are now available on the library building committee section of bblct.org. And that includes both the full survey report and an executive summary. Survey results were covered in the info sessions on April 28th and May 1st. We are looking to canvas the community, um, but we are thinking about rescheduling that for September, which would better align with uh, supporting the campaign. We also discussed additional ways to inform the public about what's going on, such as having a library building committee table at various town sports and town events, such as Celebrate Bloomfield and summer concerts. We also executed a phone campaign where volunteers called approximately 2000 residents in District 3 to inform them about the library building project and the information sessions. We 
were able to have 50 residents um, share their email addresses and they were all registered to participate in the Zoom info session on April 28th and were invited to come on May 1. Um, and in conclusion, Maxine is not here, but I just want to um, highlight all the work Maxine did to make that a smooth and successful campaign, um, as well as all the all the volunteers who did call all those residents. It's it's wonderful um, and helps us be more transparent in the process. Thank you. Any questions on that report or the work of the committee subcommittee? Oh. Yeah, Greg, I have a question. Those worksheets, what do we do with those worksheets? I still have mine. I've got, I jotted down notes for everybody I called. Yeah. What do I do with that worksheet? Bring it over to the library? Oh, well, Bob, yes, you could drop it off at the library, but all of the um, the Google Sheets, we were able to get all the information from them. Okay. And it, it was online and it's automatically shared with all of us. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Excuse me. Can other members that are not members of that subcommittee have access to that Google Doc so that we could look at those documents at our own leisure to where we're not necessarily required to attend your meetings? Because sometimes your Saturday meetings are just a conflict of scheduling. So can the entire membership of this library building committee have access to that information? Uh, we can talk with the, the chair of the subcommittee to find out uh, what the That's process it. is and what the plans are with respect to that information. I don't know that all of the details from those phone calls have been shared with the entire subcommittee. I know that folks can input their information, but Lee, I, you probably know this, but I can. Can you see? It was just a. It was just shared to all the volunteers for people who called. It wasn't really necessarily about the subcommittee. It was just. It was shared with the yeah. people. Yeah. It was. It was. I, I, understand, I, I understand that, but the thing about it is, is that is feedback that you're receiving directly from the community, okay? And that is the only. Uh, those are the only people that I care about while being in these calls. I don't particularly care about our, all, all of our individual perspectives, but when I make decisions and I do my research and due diligence, it, it's with the overall community in mind. With the fact that some of these subcommittee members or directors or heads or chairs of these committees are actually not voting members of this overall committee, I, I have a bit of concern. So I'm not looking for guidance from the uh, subcommittee chairmen's or chairwomen's. I'm looking to you, uh, Mr. Chair, to provide access to all of that information to the overall committee. And it is up to the voting members of this committee to make their own discernment, use their own discernment to determine what information that is available is value to them based on what they want to know more about and, and what that, is, that isn't. But I mean, to follow this superficial chain of command to me, I, I, I'm a bit taken aback by it. Okay, thank you, Budunzi. We'll uh, try and address that. And, uh, In I, what I, way? Because I, I need to know uh, what should I, finish, I expect. Can I finish, please? Can yes. I finish? Yes. Uh, the, the plan was that the chair of the subcommittee was going to present or prepare a summary of the information. I don't know that we plan to share all of the phone calls information to everyone on that subcommittee, but there will be a summary of the information that we received through the process that will be shared with the entire committee. Mark, I understand that, um, Mr. Chair, but the thing about it is, is that I have asked you at multiple meetings, so I don't want it to be limited to just asking for these phone calls. It's not limited to just the phone calls. It's the broader picture as to what happens in these subcommittee meetings and the access to the documentation and communication provided within those meetings. Thank, Thank you. you. Mark? Uh, I move we wait for a recommendation from the uh, outreach committee on what to do with the uh, information in question. Second. Thank you. Any discussion, further discussion or any discussion on that motion? My discussion would be that I, th I think the uh, there's a question about um, exposing phone numbers and so forth 
Uh, and I think some people might find that that's not good for privacy circumstances. But for Dunsey, if it reassures you, the calls that I made, um, most of them were either people hadn't heard about the project or they had heard about it. It wasn't, it wasn't earth shattering kind of information. Well, the people I'm who had reactions were mostly and who had experience with the library were very pleased with it. They were focused on uh, the needs of their children. And um, one thing that I noticed was that uh, with the huge expansion of availability of resources during the COVID time, people were not really aware of the online resources as much as I hope they will be in the future. Thank you for sharing that, Lotus. That gives me some insight in terms of the feedback and what you received. And just to be clear, I'm not interested in personal information. That information can be redacted. What I'm more interested in is the feedback similar to what Lois has just shared. I'm interested in knowing what the feedback that you received from that particular population within our community based on your outreach. And, and I, I look for more detailed information versus a, a summary overview. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor of Mark's motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Great. I'm opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll go into a construction manager report. Mark? Uh, we have no formal report. Um, we were looking at issuing the uh, RFP roughly around this time. Uh, however, uh, we haven't taken any more action to do that. I think that uh, given the status of our uh, level of detail of our uh, budget right now, the urgency uh, to issue that RFP is, is not there. And given all we have to do right now, I am comfortable um, waiting uh, till we get through the town council meetings that are coming uh, within the next few weeks. Um, so we have a better understanding, more feedback, and we have plenty of time. We have plenty of time uh, to, to do this. Um, so um, we will eventually issue an RFP, but uh, no urgency at this time. Thank you. Any questions or comments uh, for Mark? Okay, thank you, Mark. And next I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth for her update. I wanted to start off by alerting everybody that the town has hired a new finance director. His name is Curtis Eatman and his work in experience includes being the Deputy Commissioner of Finance at the City of Schenectady, New York. He also served as the Principal Legislative Fiscal Analysis for the New York State Senate, State Finance Committee in Albany, New York. And most recently, he served the Town of Hamden, Connecticut as the Finance Director and then the Economic Development Director. His first day will be May 24th, later this month. The library is busy preparing for summer reading. Um, I want to let everybody know that we received an email from the director of public works asking us to figure out any soft costs that will be a part of the building project so that they can plan their budgets down the road. Um, I also, from the info sessions, um, you know, they were they were very interesting and very informative. It was so great to hear from our public on Wednesday and Saturday. And one thing I wanted to note was um, the continued issues uh, at both of our buildings. Um, I know that we don't always talk about them, and it's assumed that everybody knows. But these issues in both of our physical locations are ongoing. Um, and continue to be a problem. Um, also, uh, in relation to that are the continued accessibility issues. Our buildings are not handicap accessible, um, including uh, the bathroom at McMahon Wittenbury. So we look forward to having buildings that will truly serve our entire community. I wanted to highlight some stats, statistics of note. Um, in March, we had 56 new library cards um, signed up for. 
Um, we also had another high in terms of digital circulation, audiobooks, ebooks, things of that nature. Um, 1,692 items circulated. I wanted to let everyone know that we also received, I received an email from the Wittenberry Historical Society about the library uh, taking responsibility for archival collections of interest to the town of Bloomfield and the greater area. That is something that I forwarded to the library board and they will be discussing that. I also wanted to let everybody know that the state library issued the 2021 letter of intent for uh, construction grants. That is due by June 30th. That has also been forwarded to the library board. Um, one of the requirements is that the library board approves that. And um, that is also something that the library board will be looking at um, perhaps in our next meeting, our upcoming meeting on Tuesday. Um, I wanted to note that the info sessions, we recorded them. They are available on YouTube. You can go to bplct.org to watch the Zoom session. And it's already been viewed 77 times. Um, the library is getting feedback about the info session on Zoom um, on YouTube. And I'm sure many of you will be getting feedback and hearing about that. Um, it's clear that a lot of people in our community are talking about what's going on. And I wanna also say thank you to the nine attendees who showed up today. We are now including library building committee meetings in our newsletter. So the week prior to every library building committee meeting, that is on the newsletter that goes out to um, almost 6,000 email addresses. Um, so that's our attempt to make sure everybody knows what's going on um, and being inclusive, all that. The library building committee meetings are also on our calendar that um, is printed out and given out curbside and that is sent out in the Yankee Flyer monthly to every household in Bloomfield. Um, so we're really hoping that um, that encourages more people to participate. Um, and as a reminder, these meetings are open to all. And that is it from me. Thank you. Okay. Any questions or comments uh, for Elizabeth and her report? Uh, Elizabeth, I know, I think one thing that I would find helpful for when we meet up with the council on the 24th, if we can enumerate some of the challenges that uh, some of the physical challenges with both buildings so that we can sort of share in detail with the council you know what you and your staff are dealing with and the, the users of the library buildings okay yes I think that would be helpful to sort of better tell our story okay project update wit yes um, well, basically, we're moving forward. Uh, no big news at the moment, but we're, we're making progress, and uh, we are developing some the plans a little bit further, and also developing some uh, views of what the exterior of the building might look like, which we are planning to uh, present next week on May twelfth. Uh, we I did get a uh, this up. I think Mark had sent through today a, a list of uh, meetings going forward. Uh, we're here, today's meeting isn't listed here, but May 12th here is uh, when we'll be presenting uh, the exterior views and updated plans for Prosser and uh, McMahon. Uh, and I think the intent is that will be also, uh, uh, Richard will be presenting a draft of our report at that time that will incorporate uh, this information. Uh, for review and so then we'll be aiming to present the final uh, report uh, a little later, I believe on the uh, May 24th. Uh, and then I understand there's June 3rd, there's a initial meeting with the design review board uh, and then other meetings going forward with, with <coughs> the committee. I'm not sure exactly what these are, but we'll, we can get those, add those to the schedule as needed as we go forward. Are we meeting next week? Uh, that's coming up, Bob. Give us a hold on. Okay. Okay. 
Wait, can you speak up a little bit? I'm having a hard time hearing you. Sorry, I seem to be having tr trouble with this mic unless I hold it up close to my mouth. Um, so yeah, the next, the May 12th is when we're scheduled to have the exterior views and the updated floor plans uh, and the draft report at that time. Um, we did uh, update the plans with some conceptual furniture layout that we provided the, the library to help understand kind of how the spaces, the fit of the spaces. This is not in any way a, an actual uh, furniture layout in detail, but it's to help give a sense of the scale of the rooms and the plan. Uh, and we're uh, developing a similar one for the Wintonbury uh, branch where we had previously just shown some furniture in the proposed edition. So we'll, we're infilling that this week so that you'll have something that suggests the layout in, in both new and existing spaces in <clears> both plans. Um, that's really all I have at the moment, uh, but I can answer any other questions. Uh, excuse me, what I kind of yes. have a question and it's kind of feeding off of uh, what Mr. Brennan was just asking in terms of a meeting on a 14th. I see your timeline. I don't see that information shared in the information that, that we were presented with. Is it possible if that information could be shared with us? Because well, your I... timeline doesn't seem to be aligned with the timeline <laughs> in which I have record of. Yeah, that's not my timeline. It was really just a list of upcoming meetings. I think that the committee or the town is looking as a part of this process. So we're just trying to incorporate that information into okay. our timeline. So it'll be probably in our next version when we update our schedule to incorporate any of those that are relevant to, to our, our portion of the project. Okay, because in some of those I see noted you're with the, the chair and vice chair. And so I'm, I'm kind of trying to have a better understanding because we're kind of not debriefed before those discussions take place, I'm kind of curious as to what those actual meetings um, entail. I don't, I can't answer that. Okay then, yep. uh, Mr. Chair, Vice Chair, can either of you do that for me, please? I'd be happy to, Gray, if you want me to uh, answer that. Sure, Mark. Um, yeah, that uh, schedule that I sent over to uh, Witt's office mm -hmm. uh, is something that was developed months ago Mm -hmm. uh, by the outreach group just to kind of track where we want to be. Um, and uh, it's been on Google for anybody to access. Um, but it's but it's not, uh, it's just a working tool. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, the first thing I want to say is that um, the May 12th date on there was uh, simply there because that's when TSKP said they would have exterior views uh, but I think we need to have a discussion on the need um, to actually meet uh, next week to look at those or not. Um, uh, we have a regular meeting two weeks from tonight. Um, and just like we had uh, some interim meetings to look at other things, we, if we need to, then we need, you know, we should discuss uh, a need to look at these exterior views next week um, or not. Um, so that's one item. Um, the other items on that schedule are uh, things we discussed at the public presentation, going to the beautification committee, going to the CEEC commission, uh, going to town council. Um, you know, uh, there's, there's really no new information on there, but um, uh, literally no one has seen the latest date uh, of this could, because I just came up with it a couple hours ago. So Okay. Um, no okay. one's no one's behind the eight ball on that, um, okay. but it's all things we've been talking about just to sort of track uh, what we're doing as as we move forward. I think the big item is is whether or not we um, need to be uh, discussing, reviewing, and discussing these elevations next week rather than waiting for two weeks. Okay. Um, I, I thank you for your feedback, Mark. I appreciate you um, responding to that. And, and based on your response, um, it kind of ties into something that was mentioned earlier, and I'm not quite sure if you had joined the call um, when that had been touched upon, but it, 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 it relates to the Google, the Google Doc share, and, and that I, I, I requested that 
all members of, of the overall committee, especially voting members, have access to the, the Google Doc. I mean, it seems as though just those that are part of those, the subcommittees that utilize um, that resource um, have access to it. But I think that it would be in the best interest of all members. I'm, I'm only speaking for myself, but I think it would be in the best interest to have access to all information to, to make an informed decision. Because looking at the schedule that you just provided, although I'm not a part of that meeting, you know, if, if it hadn't been touched on today, I would not um, have thought of different questions that I have, you know, as it relates to what your topic of discussion would be, you know, and, and that way I, I wouldn't have to take up time during this meeting. It could be something I could send to the overall committee in terms of um, my questions and to maintain a, a sense of transparency. So I, I thank you for that, but I would appreciate that if all voting members and particularly and specifically have access to all of the documentations. Thank you. Any more questions for Wit? Lois has her hand up. Lois. I, you said that you were hoping to have the solar estimates and, and um, the geothermal estimates. Um, and is that for both buildings? Is it for one building? Um, um, when will we discuss them? Yeah, I think Downs on their estimating had defined those as line items, but had not yet developed a number for them uh, the last time they presented. So uh, we can reach out to, to Downs and see if they've been able to uh, establish some kind of allowance. Obviously, they're going to have to make some assumptions about the scale of the installation, but they can at least give some sense of what the cost of that might be. Uh, Lois, I, I did speak to, I spoke to Dave yesterday, Dave Patrick oh, at Downs. And he had not gotten the proposal yet. I didn't know if it covered both buildings. I thought it was really only one building, but I could be mistaken. So I did not ask him that question, but they had not received the, uh, the information on the uh, electricity yet. If you, if you do ha have a chance to talk to him, from my perspective, I'd like to have the information for both buildings. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions for Wit? Okay, uh, thank you, Wit. And I will just add that uh, based on the fact that we will, or Taisu Kim will release the uh, exterior study uh, next Wednesday, the 12th, uh, it's my recommendation that we have a meeting on the 12th uh, to review the presentation of the draft study and uh, that will give us ample time if there's any initial feedback or feedback following that meeting uh, to uh, make the necessary revisions and recommendations so that when we go to council on the 24th, uh, Taisu Kim uh, has plenty of time to incorporate any additions or changes to the exterior study. Uh, I think that we could, um, it would be helpful, most helpful to the architects, I guess. Uh, to present the exterior study uh, next week and we can uh, provide comments and feedback and also have another week to uh, review it uh, in greater detail and discuss it at the meeting on uh, the 19th. Uh, so I just wanted to open that up to see if uh, folks might be uh, open to meeting next Wednesday for a special meeting to review the uh, first exterior study that we'll receive. Mark? I, uh, yeah, I, I, I just would take my um, cue from the architect um, because like you said, it will really benefit the architect to get feedback as soon as possible uh, on that. So if the architect would like us to meet in a week, then I'm in favor of meeting in a week. What? I think that's our preference. Uh, I think both Richard and Taisu would like the opportunity to present what they're thinking uh, and and then give the committee time to digest it and come back, as you said, with any comments. So that, that would be the best if that's possible. Okay. Uh, any feedback, Lois? Um, I, I wondered if we would all could build into that meeting also a discussion of the environmental aspects of the building. Um, we had talked about uh, doing that at some point 
and we hadn't ever really gotten around to having a committee-wide discussion of it. So if there were time to build that in, I would be very grateful, um, not only about the solar and, and the geothermal, but about how the building itself is put together to be as efficient as possible. We, we can uh, share that with Richard and Wick can talk with Richard to see if they can uh, accommodate and have that information or at least be in a position to discuss it uh, next week. Yes. Thank you, Lars. That's a great suggestion. Yeah. Anyone else? Any feedback, Bob? No. Uh, I would like prefer that uh, we, if we have a special meeting next week, to be a sole topic, which is the the exterior design. Uh, I understand Lois's concern and I don't quarrel with it, but I really would think that, that we need to focus on one thing for the architects because I don't think that they're going to be able to, we're, we're looking at the outside design. We're not looking at anything else regarding the building at this point in time. So I'm not sure how environmental would come in on the outside, what the outside design is going to look like. I can understand without environmental concern would come in on what materials are used, et cetera, et cetera. But on the design itself, I'm not sure that's, that's germane. And I'd really like to see the meeting focused. Good point, okay. I actually, Bob, would say that the design, the shape of the building, where it's placed on the site, what, how, where the windows are, all that sort of thing is related it, it may not be the detail about whether you're making bamboo floors or not, but it certainly relates to the amount of energy that the building is going to need. Um, and I'd be surprised if the architects didn't think it was related. I would, if I could just respond, I mean, I think on the one hand, I understand where Bob's coming from. Uh, um, and I think the fact that, you know, we don't really have a complete building design by any means at this point. We're really at a conceptual level. Uh, so I, I think the sustainability uh, issues are, are necessarily going to be a more generalized discussion of sustainability. And it is integrated into how the building is designed. And the, it's really perhaps a discussion about what commitment the, the town and the library, the building committee has towards sustainability uh, that can drive the design going forward. Uh, but uh, yes, I mean, I think we'll certainly be able to give some suggestion of how sustainability can be addressed in the level of concept that we're at at this point. Okay, cool. Any other thoughts or feedback on the meeting next week? We've done some right. hand up. Thank you, Nancy, I appreciate that. Um, yes, I do. Um, I, and I also want to touch on what Lois um, just said, because I, I think that what we, where we find ourselves is that, you know, we're, we're, we're bucked up against these timelines, but we haven't had discussions leading up to those timelines and deadlines to, to really, you know, hash it out and have a better understanding and to ensure that what we're looking for is incorporated and in what we get. So I, I'm on board with Lois, Lois, excuse me, pardon me for that, um, with making sure that that discussion includes it, the special, um, the special meeting, whether it be limited to the feedback that you guys get back after your call end this, but I think it's prudent that we do that. I do also have um, a, a one request as it, as it relates to special committees meetings. Um, since you have this timeline and you have these meetings and you have an idea because you, you're scheduling these meetings based on the, I guess the, the micro timeline and not the macro timeline of this whole project. I, I think that there should be more foresight in terms of planning these um, special committee meetings to where, you know, when you know it's going to require some committee discussion and especially a vote, that it doesn't, it's not the week before you want to have the special committee meeting. You know, the last time we had a special committee meeting, it was the week after the initial meeting. It's kind of like, you know, 
being cognizant of schedules, although we, we already meet every two weeks. And so I just like more planning and more foresight um, being placed on when we have special meetings and how it fits into the deadline and, and timelines in which uh, we're trying to meet. Thank right. you. Thank you. I, I will say that the document that we had uh, that has the meetings that will take place, all those meetings are included in the milestones that we see every meeting that Taisu Kim presents. Uh, we've added some extras to update it, but folks have all of that information in the milestones. And it, it's, I will say that there are folks here who are working very hard to put this together. And people, if your schedule allows, or if it doesn't allow, folks are rolling up their sleeves and working on weekends and several days a week. And I find it somewhat disconcerting that some folks who don't participate come to the meeting with all the concerns and questions, but they're not rolling up their sleeves and doing the work. It's sort of like Monday morning quarterbacking when you have the majority of people on this committee going above and beyond doing the work and everyone is invited to all subcommittee meetings all full committee meetings, everything we do, but those folks who don't show up tend to have the biggest problems and ask them questions. And Excuse so, me, are you are you gearing that towards me? I'm because towards I do believe Excuse you me, are. I'm speaking, I'm speaking okay. you. thank you. Okay. So uh, again, uh, we have an open process and I am at this point very, very committed and I thank everyone on this committee for doing the work that they're doing, but I just get so frustrated with folks who tend to throw rocks but are not rolling up their sleeves to, to get the work done. And do we have, I think we're ready to vote on the meeting for next Wednesday. All in favor of meeting next Wednesday for a special meeting to discuss the external study, please signify by saying aye, raise your hand. Aye. aye. Bob Berman, I hear you. Yes, no? You're I muted, think you mean Mr. external Bob. design, not external study. The external design study, correct. Thank you. Yeah, I, yeah I'm in favor. Okay. All right. Uh, Nancy, do yes. you have an invoice? Yes, we have um, the invoice from Downs Construction. It's invoice number one for the estimating services in the amount of $5,000. So moved. Second. Second. Bob Berman, any discussion on the invoice? Um, oh, just, just one comment. Yes. Uh, I know we're paying the, this is a free fee, and I don't have a problem with that, but I presume we're also still gonna get the, the solar and the geothermal estimates, even though we will pay. Paying the full fee. I would say, Bob, not only are we getting them, they continue to respond to questions when I call them. And I think I exchanged three emails with them today. So yes, I would say the answer would be yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition or abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, Future meetings again uh, next Wednesday. We will start at six o'clock sharp. And I thank you all for your willingness to do that. I think it will be uh, very informative and helpful, particularly for our architects and the committee. Uh, we, our next regular committee meeting is on the 19th, and then we'll meet again on June 2nd. Uh, comments from the committee? Right. Yes. Um, I, well, I want to thank everybody who from the public who participated Wednesday and Saturday. And um, just to uh, piggyback on, on what you asked Elizabeth in terms of uh, keeping the, uh, um, the need of all of this to the forefront. And we've talked about it a lot, um, but I think it was a real eye opener on Saturday. We got a very direct blunt question about why do we need this? And I think we've all been, uh, we've been at this a long time. We certainly address that uh, uh, satisfactorily to ourselves. Um, I think we have to continue to remind the public about why we need this, uh, you know, why, 
why we know what we know about what we have uh, and there and the genuine need for all of this. We've been, it's you know, that was easy. Um, the hard part's been making sure we uh, take the greatest advantage of, of this opportunity and make it the best library system it can be. But, um, you know, we kind of glossed over the need a little bit in our public presentations out of um, maybe a little laziness on our part or just uh, taking that for granted on our part. And just a reminder, the public really needs to know why we need all this. Uh, and uh, thank you, Greg, for reminding Elizabeth of that. I just want to remind everybody of that because uh, they haven't been with us since July at every meeting. So it, it really was an eye opener on Saturday. And Elizabeth addressed the question wonderfully. So thank you. Any other comments before we go to the public? Bob. I do as well. Yep, thank you. Uh, I just want to share with the whole committee something I shared at the beginning before we actually started the meeting. Uh, I stopped at town hall today, take a look at where the state right away is in front of, in front of Foster. And I discovered that it is a straight line. And if you think about the front of Prosser or Tunches Avenue, where the two handicapped parking places are, the state right of way ends where the sidewalk and those two parking places meet on Tunches Avenue. So uh, the building has to be at least 10 feet away from that, away from the right of way. On Mountain Avenue, which is when you're facing Prosser is on the left, the right of way is much further into the property. The existing building is roughly two feet from the right of way line. So the new building is going to have to shift to the west, I think, or north, at least eight feet. Uh, but it can come forward toward Texas Avenue a considerable amount of distance if it, if it works out. But uh, um, yeah. I, can, I can share the image we have from the DOT diagram, if that's helpful for this. Might be. So I believe what you, this is an aerial view overlaid with the information from the town. And this dark line here, I believe, is what you're referring to. Because uh, this, I think this right here is the handicapped space along the current mountain yep. road. So uh, right you see the dark here. line, the dark yes. line, that dark black line is the right black line. Yep, right here and right here. Yep. And here, here it's going a couple feet off the corner of the building. Yep. The building, our building is sitting back behind this line here. And we're also staying clear of it here because we were also conscious of this potential of these traffic circles right. that we understand may change. But uh, yep. so the building has to stay to the north of this line, obviously. And it has to stay uh, upwind of this line. So you know, where we have it positioned now is in this area, but we can certainly tweak it a little bit as needed. Yeah, yeah, but I, did, I want to make sure people are aware, aware of that because <laughs> I wasn't aware of exactly where the lines were. Yeah. Thank you. Udanzi? Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I, I want to take a moment to respond to some of the comments that you made earlier, uh, Mr. Chair, as well as some of the comments that are in the minutes um, from the special uh, meeting in which we had. The thing is, is that I may not agree with some of the decisions that are made by the overall body Okay, and the votes that are taken, because my position is different. And I, and I have attended a couple of meetings on Saturday myself, and I do engage and I do read the documentation that's been provided to me prior to these meetings. So I'm a bit offense, offended by some of your statements in terms of everyone is invited. Yes, but everyone doesn't have access to the information that is provided 
within those meetings. We get a overview of what was discussed, an overview of what's been provided from both the consultants in which we hired, the burgers, as well as the architects and as well as Downs. I, for me to make an informed decision, I need to see all, all documentation that isn't available to me when Nancy or whoever is covering for Nancy in her absence isn't providing that information prior uh, to these meetings. So I'm a, I mean, you may be sensitive to that. That's reflected in the meetings and you reflected that uh, during this call, but I'm sensitive to the fact that, you know, my concerns, which I believe are genuine when we're talking about the amount of money that we're asking the people of Bloomfield to pay for. And I have been steadfast in my position ever since our first meeting. So my concerns and what I express, whether it be questions and or concerns, have been consistent since we started meeting. Prior to some new members members having joined this meeting. Um, I've been consistent. It's, it's recorded. You can research that and check it out yourself. So I'm, I, I, I'm really, I'm not a fan and I'm not appreciative of the fact that, you know, it's like me and someone else are, are made out to be the bad guys. After that special meeting, I received a personal email from a member on this committee wanting to know the real reason why I voted against a new building and had been steadfast. I had been steadfast all along about a renovation. That had been my position all along, okay? I was a bit taken aback by that, okay? Prior to that email, I had received another email in which other members on this committee decided they wanted to jump on that email and attack me and another member that wasn't voting like the majority. I, I'm an independent thinker, okay? I'm not a group thinker and I'm not a person that's going to uh, get along to you know, preserve the peace. If my position is my position and I do my own due diligence outside of what you provide, because I do reach out to other professionals in this field to get a better understanding as the information that you know, is being provided to us, I do have people that I consult on the outside to help me have a better understanding. But even with that consultation, I still have questions to those that are rendering services to deliver these products to us. And so to be personally attacked by some members on this committee, okay, directly or indirectly, because I'm not a group thinker, I'm offended by that. Now I'm gonna tell you this and then I'm gonna leave it here. I then got a follow-up email because I ignored that email after that meeting. I got a lengthy follow-up email that Saturday, okay, that was more offensive then the first email I had gotten originally or the one that I had gotten that Thursday. And I'm telling everybody on this committee, we don't have to agree. We don't even have to like each other. But I hope that we can come together to do what's in the best interest of the citizens of Bloomfield. Because at the end of the day, the payment for this charge is not on just the people on this committee. The payment will be the responsibility of this entire town. And so you don't have to like me. But listen, please don't send me any more emails because I'm a person of transparency. I will put you on blast, okay, indirectly or directly. Right now I'm doing it indirectly. But I can't say that the next time I won't call names. But let's keep this professional and let's have some dignity and some decorum with this because it, it doesn't exist. And I'm not gonna play with a facade as if it does. When I'm receiving personal emails and calls, I don't engage in that. So I, I'd appreciate if it cease and desist. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments from the committee? If not, uh, we can go to them. We have somebody, we, I have to say, we've got seven people here from the public. And I, I do want to say that um, I've got several requests this week to uh, uh, register for the committee. So 
very happy to see that. And I think it's probably a direct result of our informational sessions. But right now we have Sten Kasperson with his hand raised and I'm going to uh, promote him. Sten, if you unmute yourself, go ahead and talk. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Thank you Nancy. Oops, wait a minute, you got muted. Unmute yourself, Stan, there you go. I did, sorry. Okay. Thank you, Nancy, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will be brief on three items. The first one is I attended both informational sessions. The first informational session, session was virtual. Most people apparently uh, had the no video, so I couldn't see who they were. The second informational session was in person at McMahon. I just have to say, I was very disappointed at the lack of, I will say, neighborhood turnout for that meeting. I really thought it would show uh, support <clears throat> for McMahon. That wasn't evident. Uh, item two, solar. I know solar is high on people's lists. I would like to input and uh, Mark and uh, Bob in particular know this. The Human Services Facility building was built with a flat roof and the flat roof was designed to accommodate solar. Rather than try to put solar on Prosser where we don't know the roof line, we don't know the roof material, it's an easy matter if choice were made to put the panels on the Human Services Facility the solar companies provide a live 24-7, 365 monitoring of solar performance, which could be embedded in an educational uh, monitor in the library, Prosser and McMahon. Much more informative, much less expensive than attempting to force solar on a building that may not accommodate it very well. Item three. Uh, Bob Berman's and Witt's comments on limits on where the building can be. Suggestion, put a couple of stakes on the ground with some uh, ribbons on it so the committee can see where the limits are on that building site to go forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stan. Is there anyone else in the public who would like to speak? If so, raise your hand. Okay, there's no one else, but we thank you for your attendance. All right. Uh, thank everyone. Uh, again, this was a really productive meeting and we look forward to the special meeting on Wednesday. Uh, Leah and Maxine, I get <clears throat> you all will get information out as to whether or not the meetings will take place on this Saturday or the following Saturday. Uh, but uh, hearing none, we will entertain a motion to adjourn. No moved. Second. Mark, okay. Lots of seconds out there. There were oh, a lot of hands raised. Yep. Right. Got it. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Right. Thank bye. you, Greg. Nice to see everybody.